Welcome everybody to another video of Vinyl Attic. This is Chili and today in Rock November 12, 2003 we lost Tony Thompson, drummer for Chic and Power Station to Kidney Cancer. Now before I get into this, please don't forget to hit the like button, comment on this video, share this video, and if you still haven't, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for updates. Okay, Tony Thompson. So we lost him, yes, 2003. Two months after um, his fellow bandmate Robert Palmer had a heart attack. And um, <clears throat> yeah, what a terrible loss. I'm going to go through some records here and uh, kind of just show a, a lot of the other projects he was involved in. He was a great session head and played on a lot of major albums. And so there's some songs that you may have known but didn't know that he was the one in the drum kit behind the drum kit. So let's start off with, of course, where it all started for him was Chic. Okay, so um, Bernard Edwards on bass, now Rogers on guitar. Now they are the ones who pretty much define disco, you know, in this rhythm section right here. So on this album, this is their their first album with Dance, 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 Yoza, 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 Everybody Dance is a hit. Of course, he did other songs like Left Freak, their popular song, Good Times, you know, and so uh, this is their first album I also have here, you know, because this is a record vinyl channel. This is a 12 inch of Chic for I Want Your Love. And it's, it's pink, 1978. Beautiful. Okay, so they are pretty much the ones that define disco, right? So all you KISS fans who still hold a resentment for your band doing a disco song and have, you know, misguided hatred and misdirected your hatred towards like Saturday Night Fever or Donna Summer, maybe a little hatred towards Donna Summer, but Chic is probably one of those <laughs> that you should really um, hate because <laughs> they're the ones who pretty much, you know, kind of are, are, are the ones really in the beginning of this kind of movement of that genre. Now you fast forward to 80, mid 80s 85 you know tony thompson here he is with power station which is kind of like a they're kind of like a super group right you got robert palmer on vocals and you got two duran duran members you got john taylor on bass and you got andy taylor on guitar now now rogers was producing their last album duran duran's last album which was a uh, seven and the ragged tiger and John Taylor is a, you know, chic uh, disciple, a Bernard Edwards uh, disciple, along with, you know, Roxy Music and that type of thing. So, you know, Tony Thompson's in good hands, pretty much. And um, John Taylor, uh, oddly enough, when approaching uh, Robert Palmer to be part of this, you know, brought with him a tape of them record a recorded demo of some like it hot and there's like that little drum uh solo in the intro and everything and um you know john taylor was saying like you know this kind of this band and some of the songs are pretty much um put in place to showcase tony <laughs> it's pretty much what this is all about um he is the power right and of this group and you know all these other tracks on here like murderous communication which was a a big successful song as long as as well as bang a gong get it on they do a great cover of harvest for the world which is a isley brothers song but yes power station was a uh, uh, quite the band and that in this that distinct sound of um tony thompson you know tony thompson has said that he is a Bonham, uh, Ginger Baker, um, you know, th those are the, the heroes that he um, name checks. And, you know, there's a lot, you know, his power, at the way he hits, he says he hits hard, like Bonham, and then, but, it, but he keeps it uh, 
the control for, for like just staying in the cut, staying in the groove is sort of like, I guess, all that experience playing the disco stuff, you know, and then you, then you kind of mesh it in with the hard and heavy power of, uh, of, of like Bonham, you know, so you can, he's kind of meshing those two things together, which is kind of cool. Unheard of, right? Okay, so now he also played on his bandmate's uh, solo album, Riptide. This is Robert Palmer. Okay, he had like three singles on here. Hyperactive, Addicted to Love, I Didn't Mean to Turn You On. Now, Addicted to Love, that... You got you to gotta hear this version because this is the long six-minute version that the way it was meant to be heard. You have the lead by the lead solo by Andy Taylor again from a power station in on this track. And yes, and so this is the way it goes. That if you're gonna listen to this song, and you know he's done some other great stuff on here, Flesh Wound, which is a really uh, showcases his monster ability on the drums. So there you go, Robert Palmer and Riptide. Okay, so let's go to David Bowie. All right, so Let's Dance album, he's on here. He does you know, Modern Love, all those great songs. Like I said, you may have heard, but didn't know who was on the drum stool. And it's Tony Thompson. And you know, oddly enough, there's Stevie Ray Vaughan on here as well in the song uh, Let's Dance. Now, uh, this is produced by Nile Rogers, another chic you know, connection here. So he kind of just brings these chic people, you know, brings Tony along, right, as he's producing these people, because he will produce the next record that I show you, and Tony's on there, but of course, Bowie always has the last say. So of course, he's gonna not deny Tony Thompson, right? He also, because uh, of his performance here, I guess he took him on the tour. He was on the Serious Moonlight tour, right? So. Now, Tony Thompson also played on this album, Like a Virgin. So, very successful pop album right here. So, again, you, here's that drummer that you don't know who's behind the kit. But on the songs, Material Girl, Like a Virgin, and the uh, remake, she covers the song Love Don't Live Here Anymore from Rolls Royce. So, um... There you go, Tony Thompson strikes again. And of course, he, I wouldn't, how could I do a video without bringing a member of the Rolling Stones or the Rolling Stones, because it all goes back to the Rolling Stones. I always say that, right? Just like uh, in film, it would be the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Well, in rock, music, popular culture, it all, you know, six degrees of the Rolling Stones. So, Tony Thompson is on this album and the song Hard Woman. So there you go. So there, there was a kind of like um, showcase of just some of the popular numbers and, and projects that Tony Thompson was a part of. Now, in the mid 80s, in 85, you know, his manager did call him up and uh, call Tony and said, hey, I got Robert Plant and Jimmy Page on a three-way conference call right now, and he's all, yeah, right, and he, he hung up, right? Then his manager called back against it, don't hang up, I do, I, there's Robert Plant and Jimmy Page, and so he was just like, okay, what's going on? And then uh, Robert Plant said, yes, uh, we've been asked to do Live Aid, which was the big concert in the 80s, which was televised worldwide, for famine relief and there was going to take place in two um, continents at the same time one in England in Wembley Stadium and and uh, JFK in Philadelphia and they would be performing in the Philadelphia um, uh, section or you know a stadium so they were gonna play uh, and they did they played a uh, rock and roll whole lot of love and Stairway to Heaven. So he did agree to do this, Tony Thompson, and, you know, because Robert Plant also said that, you know, when, when Zeppelin broke up, that they would never get back together again because they don't have John Bonham. And, 
you know, Tony Thompson is a John Bonham disciple. That That's the, one of the guys he names checks as one of his heroes. And so for him not to, to, to take this gig, he's like, no, this was a dream gig for him. So he's all, yeah, I'll do it. Now, uh, this performance, however, has been marred as uh, not a, a very uh, memorable uh, reunion for Led Zeppelin. There was a lot of things involved and w where their set suffered. And uh, one of the things is that, um, okay, as far as the rehearsal goes, there was a little rehearsal and, you know, uh, Tony Thompson also said that it was really cool um, when they were going through rock and roll because the intro, that famous intro that John Bonham does um, on that track you know, he started going, okay, so it's a two and four type of thing. And then Jonesy was like, no, no, no. Bonham does it like this. It's more like a texture sh shuffle kind of thing. And, you know, and he was like, really like, you know, up, up, you know, in, in the stars at that moment. Like, wow, you know, just like I'm getting all these little secrets about this hero. So that was a cool thing. Now, when you fast forward to gig night, and uh, Phil Collins has just been thrown in as part of the mix, you know. And there was really no, I don't think, any rehearsal with uh, Phil Collins because he was at first playing in the UK Wembley show in um, the morning, and then he was to fly, and he did. He flew past the, uh, the Atlantic Ocean and, you know, landed and then would go to JFK and play there, you know. He was doing this whole kind of two gigs on the same day uh, thing. And he played with Clapton's set, then he played his own set, then he would, you know, play with Zeppelin. And, you know, in his book, Phil Collins says that, okay, you know, a lot of it, the disastrous set that Zeppelin has played has been, you know, a lot of it has, uh, I, that he's been the, the one that's to, to blame for it for years, you know, because, I mean, you could see it in, in the song, A Whole Lot of Love. He really kind of screwed that up. However, um, in his defense, he was saying, well, there was a lot of other things that were involved that, you know, the two guys and, Plant and Paige will not, you know, own up to, okay, but Plant did own up to the fact that his voice wasn't all there. He was cracking, he was, you know, played three nights of his own uh, concerts back to back, and by the time he got to this one, it was just, you know, shot, kind of, sort of speak. And then, you know, Paige's guitar wasn't tuned correctly, and, you know, this and that, and, but... Phil Collins, however, did say when he saw Tony Thompson there, he said, I should have just walked away and saw that, okay. But, but however, I guess, you know, he was saying that this is the reunion of Led Zeppelin. I got to be part of this. Okay, no, you didn't. <laughs> and so, um, so he, he decides to stay in, but he could also hear during... The first song, they kind of, they w it went okay for rock and roll, but then he was even saying in his book, he was like, I should have got up and walked away right there because he, he already could not hear Plant in his monitors already. So there's all these things. And he just said, I was just going to follow Tony Thompson, whatever. And then he had some like choice words he was saying about Tony Thompson, like, you know, speaking on behalf of him, saying like, oh, he thinks that he's just going to play this um, this set and that, you know, Zeppelin are going to reunite and they're going to call him to be the guy. And so, you know, <laughs> but um, I don't know. I think he was just there because he loved, this, loved the band and, you know, it, it was an honor to do it, you know. Um, however, you know, I think throughout all these things that were going wrong with Zeppelin's 20 minute which seemed like a long set because everything sounded like crap um tony thompson kind of held it together for the most part um held this train wreck and um you know since that after that performance you know zeppelin did not want to have this performance uh, on the home dvd it's not on the home dvd or um 
collection for um, Live Aid. They fought so hard to just not have anyone see it. But, I mean, you could go on YouTube and see it and everything. And, you know, it's rock and roll. You know, just fucking, who cares? Just, it's, it's not about perfection. There's part of rock and roll where you just, you know, just let the chips fall as they may. You know, this is what, why bands like the Sex Pistols existed. You know, it's just because it's just like, it's fucking rock and roll. Just do it. But, you know, um, however, yes, it, it, it is out there. And like I, I, I was saying, you know, Page did not want, um, or Plant did not want to do a Led Zeppelin thing because Bonham was so unique. But however, you know, they chose Tony Thompson and he is really unique. And so um, that is my video for uh, Tony Thompson, this Dane Rock, November 12th, 2003. Leave me a comment below. You know, what are your thoughts on Tony Thompson's playing, you know, um, I'm sure there's some other songs out there. There's a lot of stuff he's, you, you may not remember or, uh, or I have not, you know, uh, didn't, you know, uh, take out to uh, <clears throat> share. But like I said, I just kind of wanted to, you know, showcase the really popular songs that you, you may have heard. Of. So with that, I'll shut up and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <clears throat>